So let's start to look how we can use the Chart.js legend in Chart.js 4 and we're going to do some fancy stuff with it. So the first thing what we want to do is we're going to get our border template which you can find here on Chart.js3.com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here just grab this border template and copy this and then we just put it all in here and I'll just cut out this title here put the title in here save refresh all right so now we have this here so what I want to do now is go to the chartjs.org documentation and then in here we go to configuration and we're going to search for the legend so with the legend here you can find here a few the information how we can do modifications on the legend or do something and you can see here it's in the options and the legend itself is a plugin as well so we have to go into the plugins namespace or plugin object so let's start to do this so we'll just scroll down here and then in here we can say you enter we're going to say your plugins and then we're going to put in here the legend then in the legend here let's make sure we have a comma here we can start to do something so by default the display is set on true so if you want to hide our legend which is this one here what we can do say here is a display which is a boolean value set, set on true now we can convert it into false save that refresh and there you are so we've hide that but of course it's just basics of that i don't want to do that i want to set this on true or you don't have to even show this because by default it is set on true anyway so what I do want to do here is let's try and explore the position here. And if I click here on the more option, you can see here every position possible, including the chart area, which is quite nice, but not really functional, honestly. So, but let's start to explore how to use that. So to do that, all we have to do here is the position. Let's go up here and you can see by default, it is set on top. So this is the top position. And remember, it's a string value. So if I do this, the same. So if I do here bottom, save. Now it's at the bottom. If I do right or left and then right, you can see here options. So left, there you are. And what would happen if you would have multiple data sets? So you can see that as well. Let's put in here another data set. So we have another color and I'll just change the color here like that. There you are. And then we get one in bluish color. And I just want to have a different color in there. So you have these two options here. And then if I scroll down here and put this back to top, it will be in a nice line. All right, so now we have this part. What about the chart area? And the chart area, if you're wondering what that is, chart area is very useful to understand. Although not in this case, but for another case, we need the width and height of the chart. It's basically everything within this square box here where we draw the chart. And uh, well, I say square, it's a rectangle, but it can be a square depending on if it's a uh, pie chart or donut chart. So as you can see here, this is not 100% practical. It's a bit over overriding each other or it's overlapping each other. Next, we have here the alignment of center. So we could even do this one here. Let's see how that would look. Uh, this is center already, if I'm not mistaken. But let's see here so you have your center refresh all right so if i do here top what happened or is it alignment set on let's see an alignment we're going to click on this and you can see here start center and end so if i have here end what happens you can see it goes down and start would be at the very top so it will depend if it's left or right because if i'm going to put this on top here then the end would be the end at the right side so it really depends on the positioning of our item. So then what we have here more is like we have the fonts and the fonts is basically in here. We have the legend, we have the labels, and then we have to apply here on the fonts. So to do this, we're going to say comma here. We're going to say here uh, the labels. Then we're going to say here font. And then here we're going to indicate maybe the size, but there's a lot more options here, size, weight well let's put in the weight so it's easy to spot we make this bold and then save that refresh you can see here this is bold so make sure you pay attention on this here because it is slightly different indicated compared to here with the font uh where is that reverse on leave hoover hold on alignment i thought i saw somewhere the font but anyway okay or maybe it's in down here 
sorry, that's in the plugin legend label. So that is a different object within the legends that pinpoints specifically the labels. So apparently I scroll down here and there's a lot more in here. Anyway, I'll leave that for now because what is more interesting is basically here. These two are quite useful. Well, let's do the reverse as well. That then you can see we can reverse the order of our item. I'm going to hide this. We don't need this one here in this example. I'm going to reverse, set this on true. And what will happen? And it's true because it's a Boolean. By default, it is set on false. You can see here now the blue will be shown first and the red one will be shown last. And you can see that here we have this different order here. Red first and then blue. And now it swaps the order or reverse the order. Finally, this is the one that I am more excited about because this is quite fun. So you can imagine here, if you hover over this area, you would like to convert this item into a cursor where people know you can click on these items. Because right now that's not clear. So how do we do this? Well, the on hover and the on leaf are very useful for that. So let's start to work on this. And I'm going to use this one here. So we're going to say hover, and then we're going to check here on three items here, the event, the legend item, and the legend itself. And we will be only needing this one, but I'll just grab them all. And I'm talking about on hover, but the on leaf and on hover are identical on that level. So what I'm going to do here, put these three in here, and then of course we need to make sure that this is a callback functionality so it has double parentheses oh and i don't know what's going on here i didn't want to do that um that is not what i wanted to do sorry all right my bad i don't know i just pressed something where we duplicated the uh screen but i didn't want to duplicate it anyway we have this here and these three we have here and then what we need to do here because we have double parentheses here callback functionality so we need an arrow function expression and then we can do here console log and just look at the event let's do this one first save this then go back here and then i want to open up here this and you can see here in the console log it is starting to record when we are with our mouse move or hovering our legend so you can imagine if this is clickable, shouldn't we have a proper cursor? Yes, we can. With the legend here, we can do this nicely. So what I'm going to do now is just quite simple, figuring out how we can convert the cursor nicely. So for that, we have here the event, and there's so many more. So let's put in this one, and then what I want to do is I want to make sure we have also the legend item. So you have an understanding of each of these, and then afterwards we're going to select this one and use that properly. Refresh, hover over here. All right, so what we get here is basically we get here the event itself, indicating here the X and Y coordinates and all of this is very useful, but eventually what we'll be needing is everything in here. And then I'll cover it later on. So here you can see here, we just have the basic information, everything about, if I'm not mistaken, all about the legend itself. You can see here the basic items. And then here we have uh, I guess this is as well we're going to the legend settings not really that important for our case what I want to do here is I want to make sure that we have this mouse move and the moment we have a mouse move and we're hovering on top of this item convert the cursor so let's start to do that I'm going to remove all of this and let me just show you where we're going so you have an understanding of it so we're going to go here in the mouse move so then what I want to do is I'm going to go into the chart I'm going to scroll down on the chart and I'm going to search for the canvas. And the canvas is basically the element here. That's the full canvas. But what I want to do is that only if you're hovering on this area that our cursor converts. And luckily, ChartJS has this built in, which was previously or before not the case. So what we're going to do here in the canvas, we're going to scroll down. We're going to look for the style. So basically, we're going to uh, go all the way down here uh, and click on these triple dots here. And we have here the style. And in the style, we're going to search for the cursor. I'm going to scroll down here, scroll down, letter C. There we are. As you can see here, the cursor is undefined or has no value, meaning default cursor. So what I want to do is I want to change this. And how do we get here? Well, we can hover over it. You can see here the whole uh, object name, chart.canvas.style.cursor. Remember that. So I'm going to say here, chart.style. Uh, canvas 
then the canvas i want to change the style of the canvas and what exactly do i want to adjust the cursor in the css styling so basically this is just css going to the css through javascript and then what i'm going to say here this will be now equal to what exactly a pointer so we change this so if i save this right now refresh now i hover over it you can see here we get the pointer but now it needs to indicate instead of a console log we're going to say here this will be equal to pointer save that refresh and all right interesting it doesn't work all right i just check quickly what is the issue and of course this is my bad we have your cursor make sure you spell this correctly because now we have a new name cursor that should be like that all right my bad sorry about that if i save this refresh there you are as you can see here our pointer now converts into a uh, or our cursor converts into a pointer however if this is a problem we are not converting it back when we're outside of the area so let's convert this back of course for that all we need to do is look for the next one which is on leave and on leave is a callback that is called when the mouse move event is registering outside of the previous hoovered label absolutely phenomenal they have the built in here so then what i'm going to do here just do this on leave and we can just do everything else i guess we can just even remove all of these just to keep it a bit more concise and this should be like that there we are and then we're going to say here event should be like that and then we can say here this will be equal to this that's a bit more shorter we can so we can reduce the amount of codes in here all right so once we did this comma here and then let's save that go back here refresh then convert the cur cursor and go back and going back doesn't work as well so let's see so of course it doesn't work because i need to go back to cursor or default i can just put in here default if i'm not mistaken save refresh there we are and going back as well absolutely phenomenal and that's basically it